Hello everyone, welcome to our topic, Mass Relationships in Chemical Reactions. With a specific topic in limiting and excess reagents, so we're going to tackle here the method 2 that I mentioned in the previous video. So in this lesson, we will explain the concept of limiting reagent in a chemical re reaction, identify the excess reagent or reagents. So in real practice, reactions are performed in which a reactant or reactants are used in excess with another reactant. It means that the ratio of reactants is not proportional with the ratio of substance in the corresponding balanced chemical equation. It is usually intended to cause a reactant to be used up in the reaction. In such cases, the reactant which is allowed to be used up in a reaction is called a limiting reagent, so-called because it limits the maximum amount of products that can be formed. On the other hand, a reactant used in excess in a reaction is called the excess reagent. To illustrate the concept of limiting and excess reagents, consider four burgers and seven bottles of soft drink and you are asked to prepare meals for, for consisting of one burger and one bottle of drink per meal. So given the number of burgers and bottled drinks, you can prepare up to four meals while three bottles of the drink remain unpaired with burgers. Comparing the example to a chemical reaction, let the burgers and bottled drinks be the reactants and the meals be the product. As we can see in the illustration, it is the burger that limits the number of meals prepared in the product. The burger is then the limiting reagent for the reaction. Si burger yung unang nag -run out. Unang naubos. On the other hand, the bottled drinks come in excess and some of them have no more burgers to prepare to them. So in this case, the bottled drinks be compared or can be compared to the excess reagent for the reaction. So to identify the limiting and excess reagents, for reactions, stoichiometric calculations are necessary. Consider a reaction consisting of A and B as reactants and B as product. The masses of the reactants must be compared to the number of moles using the respective molar masses. Here, the number of moles of the reactants are converted to the number of moles.
obtain the number of moles of a sister agent remaining. So given na itong 0.5024 times of 4, so dapat yung unit dito sa denominator is moles aluminum and sa taas yung ating wanted, so siya yung pinaka unit natin sa final product. So, where did we get this two? It's here. And the 4 is also the coefficient for aluminum. Using your calculator, you will arrive at this. So, cancel out itong moles of aluminum. You will arrive at the, these moles of aluminum oxide. So, the mass of aluminum, uh, what's this? The mass of aluminum oxide formed from 50. 0.5024 moles of aluminum is 0.2512 moles. Let's have the second reactant. We have the oxygen. Given 0.4573 moles of oxygen, and we have here the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation, 2 moles aluminum oxide, 3 moles of oxygen. Using the, your calculator, you will arrive at this answer, which is 0.3049 moles aluminum oxide. So, comparing the two answers, um, aluminum yields 0.2512 moles aluminum oxide. The oxygen yields 0.3049 moles aluminum oxide. So, among um, between the two, the answer giving the, le the smaller amount of the product is the aluminum. So, this aluminum gives just 0.2512 moles of aluminum oxide. So, this is smaller amount compared to this amount. So, this is the limit. Uh, the aluminum is the limiting reagent. Then, let's proceed to the next question. So, how much the question uh, in the beginning of the problem is how much aluminum oxide is in here how much aluminum oxide are generated in the reaction but in here naging how many grams of aluminum oxide so let's just um, 
interpret that how much and how many grams are just the same. So, ang gagawin natin is magpo-focus tayo sa number of moles generated sa limiting reagent natin. So, yung limiting reagent, the product, no? where we're referring to the product, the number of moles of aluminum oxide or the product generated from the limiting reagent. So, the limiting reagent is aluminum yielding 0.2512 moles of aluminum oxide. So, we are going to use the 0.2512 moles of aluminum oxide and just convert it to grams, from moles to grams. So, 1 mole of aluminum oxide is just equal to 101.96 grams aluminum oxide. So, this comes from the periodic table. So, let's solve tayo niyan. So, aluminum is how many atomic unit in the periodic table? Uh, moles per gram. I mean, grams per mole. Then, ito pong oxygen. Then, times 3 lang natin ito. Times 2 ito. And you'll arrive at 101.96 grams aluminum oxide. Just add add lahat. Using your calculator, you will arrive at 25.61 grams aluminum oxide. So that answers our second question. For the third question, the, the original question is how much of the excess reagent remained unreacted? But dito, naging how many grams of the excess reagent na siya? So, don't you worry. Let's just calculate the number of, I, I mean, the moles of the excess reagent. So, we have here, our excess reagent is oxygen, right? Our excess reagent is oxygen. So, of course, we are going to focus on the limiting reagent, the 0 0.50, 24 moles. Uh, if may used up ito, how many oxygen ang ating pwedeng gamitin? So, ito, 0 0.3768 moles oxygen. Let's just convert this to grams. So, 0. Point, but before the conversion to grams, of course, isubtract natin. Ito yung original minus 0 0.3768. Ito ang remain and reacted. And converting it to grams using the periodic table again. Okay. Cancel out ito. And what we'll have is the in grams na. Okay. So, I hope this is clear in your part. And if you have any question, uh, feel free to comment down below. Actually, this is a method for because we mentioned three methods of already of determining the limiting reagent and excess reagent. This is the fourth method using the product. Okay? So, thank you so much for listening.